The Conservation, Tillage, and Technology Conference drew quite the crowds at Ohio Northern University's McIntosh Center on March 7th and 8th. Not only is it a great event each year to learn about the latest in farming and conservation, but also a good place to ask questions about those practices already in action. And one of those common questions that we've found as of late, when is the best time to terminate cover crops come planting season? Some farmers preferring to plant into the green cover, while others wanting to burn down before they enter the field. And with quite a few speakers on hand at the conference, we ask them. When do we terminate cover crops? When do you terminate cover crops? Well, that's an interesting question because it depends on the cover crop. That's Bill Lemko of Precision Agri-Services, a panel speaker at CTTC this year. Some of it we may not want to terminate and just let it go, plant green into it, and it'll take care of itself. Otherwise, some of it, it's a real management issue. We have to, you know, pay attention to what the weather is and, of course, what cover crop we're, we're trying to uh, terminate and also what crop we're planting into it. Brett Margraff of the Seneca Soil and Water Conservation District echoed the thoughts. Well, yeah, that's exactly it. It varies. It varies from cover crop to cover crop, from year to year, from soil conditions to soil conditions. Uh, in general, we'll, we'll just talk about the simple, simple concept, and that's using rye after corn. And we, our recommendation is always to plant soybeans into a standing green cover crop. And the biggest reason why is we don't want to end up with three foot rye that's been killed, get two inches of rain, and then try to expect to plant that, because that's going to be a nightmare. So as long as it's green and growing, it's pulling moisture out of the ground, that's a benefit. It's a management tool. Um, there is no, no uh, golden rule on it though. Uh, one year, it may require a little bit different approach to it. And, and that's my advice to most people is start doing it now, start doing it on a small scale, so that you can get comfortable of understanding when to kill it, when not to kill it, and how to kill it, and you know what's effective with termination methods. For those that have been utilizing cover crops over the years, they likely know the name of Dave Brandt, a major proponent of cover crops here in Ohio. He says cover crops are the toolbox, and the time and way they're terminated are just another tool in the hands of the farmer. There's multiple modes of action on, on uh, terminating covers. Probably the easiest has been using uh, Roundup, uh, it's a burn down, uh, works really well. Uh, there's another product called Gramoxone that does the same thing, burns the top of the plants off. Then the residual herbicide you put on can go in and destroy the roots. And uh, that's one form of doing it. There's other ways of having crops that freeze out in the winter that terminate themselves or using some type of roller to terminate them when they're starting in the reproduction stage. For those that might be just getting into the cover crop side of things, what are some tips that you would give them for that? Well, I think the tips you need to look at as your cover crops, as you're just beginning, is you want to kill at planting time, maybe just before or right afterwards, you know, uh, either that or you want to kill two or three weeks ahead of time so the cover is brown and crispy. But the problem with killing it too early is if you've got a big mat or thatch and you kill it, then there's no way for the sunlight or the air to get underneath there to dry out the soil. So best is do it right at planting or right afterwards. More about cover crops and tips from the professionals online at ohioagnet.com. The Conservation Tillage and Technology Conference boasted around 60 speakers over its two-day span here in 2017. Reporting for the Ohio Ag Net, I'm Joel Pedorwood.